Farmer Jason here away from farm. It must be spring in central PA if we're firing up our irrigation pump. Um, I'm gonna get this fired up because we're right around freezing and then I'll explain what we're doing out here at 2 a.m. or I guess now it's closer to 3 a.m. on a cold morning. So I'm gonna have to have you guys ride along with me here because I do not have a camera crew because it's three o'clock in the morning. So we're on our irrigation machine here. And the first thing I've got to do is hook on my battery post. Uh, yeah. All right, I didn't have enough hands to do it all at once uh, to start this and do it, but we got the pump started and we got water flowing. in a second all right now time for an explanation now that I have a few seconds while we're waiting for the next part of this process so what you saw me so far was I started up the irrigation pump I, I pumped on the handle I couldn't get that in the view so I apologize it's on some of our other videos when we were just irrigating for uh, crops for the for the summertime but anyway where we're at now is it's 320 I just looked before I got out of the truck uh, we're standing in the strawberry field. Uh, this is the fifth night I think we've done this. Uh, I've irrigated four of them. Uh, one didn't get cold enough. Last night it was windy. So what we're doing, sorry I'm rambling at 3.20 in the morning, is we are trying to frost protect our strawberries. Uh, it is getting very cold. Uh, my thermometer over here that I have at ground level, which is important because that's where the strawberries are at, is now at 31 degrees. And so that's where we're at is 31 degrees which is below freezing which is not good for the strawberry bloom and i am in full bloom on the strawberries so what we do is we put water on them to lower their freezing point now that may make no sense uh, i've explained this to several people in the last couple days so the water does two things first of all i'm pulling it out of that large pond that we have so the water's coming out at 50 some degrees so you're going to be getting some heat from that Plus, freezing is an exothermic reaction, which means it actually gives off heat as it happens. So as these are actually getting covered in ice, they will actually freeze and give off a little bit that, as that water freezes, it gives off a little bit of energy that that bloom takes and it keeps it alive. And so we started the pump down below. It's a long process to get everything up. And I don't like to do it too fast because you can blow pipes apart. So what I do is I start the pump down below we bring the water up here and I'm just sort of waiting for it now to start getting up. And this sprinkler when I first got up here was just barely sprinkling and now it's starting to get pretty full. And so I'm gonna go over and check the other two fields also. So we're gonna run around here in the dark with my spotlight and see if we can see that all the sprinklers are up. And once the sprinklers are up, I control how much water volume is coming up by how many RPMs that machine has. So once we get everything up, I'm gonna take you down and with that part, I can, I can adjust the RPMs. The reason I didn't take too much time before is when I got here at three, it was 33 degrees. I was messing around for a few minutes, putting my thermometers out and it dropped to 32 that quickly. And now it's already 31 within 20 minutes. And so it, it's, we're right at that spot uh, in the morning where you get a little dip uh, right before dawn. And so it's kind of been a goofy night and sort of how some of this goes for any of you who don't watch the weather as much as a farmer, uh, yesterday was about 60 degrees and then as soon as it got dark it fell almost instantly into the mid 40s and then it sat mid 40s from 10 p.m. last night until just a few minutes ago and I was watching I woke up at 1 and I looked at my phone with all the weather stations they have around and it didn't drop that much and then literally a half an hour later it dropped drastically so that's why I came down and even since I've been here it's dropped pretty drastically then it'll stabilize so I'm hoping I'm hoping once we get in that 29 30 degree stage it stabilizes again until you know this time of year we're in mid late may here already i don't even know what it is i guess this is mid-may uh the sun's going to be rising by 6 a.m and so we only have about two two and a half more hours of cold and so we'll let this irrigation run those entire two and a, two and a half hours and it might actually as i said coat those strawberries in solid ice um, and that's not as bad as just letting them expose to this. And so, 
you don't want that bloom to get down below 30 for very long or else it could blow it and we have a beautiful bloom out. All right, I'm out here at the end of the line and I can hear the water. Um, I use my hearing as much as I do my sight because I have my spotlight, which we'll look out with. Uh, but it's one of those things that sometimes it's just as easy to hear it. And so we have water at the end of our line, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna crank the pump up in, in volume coming up here by turning up the RPMs to make sure I get a good coverage. And I was just out there looking at the pipes and we are starting to get a little frost on the leaves, so I'm just in time. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for here and see how those sprinklers are going around. Hopefully you can see it in the dark here with this. You can kind of hear it too. There's another one. They're not easy to catch this time of night. Uh, it's actually kind of even hard for me. You got to kind of really know how you're doing it. And a lot of times I listen. Uh, and so that's so that's what we're doing is we're just driving around in circles, making sure that all my sprinklers are up and working and that I don't have any problems with any of the pipes. And then we're going to babysit it for a little bit. And I'm going to go over and explain to you a little bit more on the temperatures as I was thinking about it. My explanation with four hours of sleep and uh, 3 a.m. wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So we'll explain a little bit more in temperatures here and then as long as I don't have any problems, that'll be it. All right, so I said that I wasn't gonna do this one more time until the temperature, but I found a spot that shows you exactly what we're doing. So right here, this is a slow moving sprinkler. Let's see if I can catch it, there it goes. And so we have time. So right here is some bloom that are outside of the sprinkler zone. And you can see they're kind of shiny and there's actually frost all over these leaves. You can see how they're frosty and the same thing's gonna be happening to that bloom. But right here, these are getting hit by the sprinkler and right now they're just wet, which is ideal. Sometimes it'll get cold enough that they'll freeze, but you can see they're actually just all wet. And so it's keeping them above 32 with that water. And the water, it's coming here. And so that water is gonna keep those blooms right above the freezing point. And even if it starts freezing, what will happen is as it freezes, as it freezes, 
as it freezes, it's going to insulate as well as do that exothermic reaction that's gonna make those blooms hopefully live through this. I mean, it's still not ideal. It's not anything that we wanna do, but it's what we try to do to save it. And what I forgot to mention earlier was the official temperature right now, right here is like 37 degrees, but, oh, here comes my water. So what I forgot to mention, I'll do it here and then I'll sign off with you guys if, uh, as long as everything goes right. Uh, what happens is the official air temperature is measured a couple feet off the ground and right now it's still in the about 35. Uh, but what happens is right on the ground on a cold clear night like this, this is what we call a beautiful, uh, I don't know if you'd see any stars, this is what you call a beautiful um, crystal clear spring night and we get radiational cooling, which means that the, that the air is super dry, there's no clouds, there's no wind, and so what can happen is all of the heat that was generated during the day goes right out into outer space. And so when you have those radiational cooling nights, the lower areas get much colder than the high areas. Like my mountain tops for most of the apples are at are still probably 38. Down at this pond where we have it is probably gauging off some of the other weather stations in the valley probably right around 30. So there's probably an eight to nine degree difference between the tops of the mountains and the valleys and the strawberries are in between and that's why they're 31 and they're especially right on the ground and that's why I put the thermometer on the ground not at five feet because that would tell me how my trees are doing not how my strawberries are doing and for this the only thing I have the ability to protect is the strawberries plus they're the most vulnerable at this moment in time. So that is why we do what we do that's how this game goes and so we're just gonna babysit this for a couple more minutes. Uh, if everything goes good for the next half hour, then probably go home, try to catch an extra 45 minutes worth of sleep before we start back at seven o'clock for our normal day. All right, thank you guys for watching. We enjoy doing these and bringing you into parts of our weird lives here in farming. Bye. All right, so it's daylight now. Uh, it got down to 28. And I think most of the time it was in the 29, 30 range. It probably was only 28 for a very short period of time. But you can see all of my sprinkles go out, and this way you can see all the ice that has gathered in the field. So you can see how it got icy. All of those are covered in ice. All that shiny stuff is ice covered. And so uh, it did its job. We're covered in ice, and hopefully the strawberries survive. I won't know for a day or so. Maybe by this afternoon I'll be able to tell if, the, if they're starting to look sick. But hopefully it wasn't super cold and they had water running on them the whole time. So I think they should be okay. We'll find out. But that's the way farming is. You do your best. Uh, you cover everything in ice and you hope for the best. All right. Thank you all for watching. We'll see what happens.